Today's lesson is about making a moon phase model to help understand the phases of the moon. As you may know, the moon rotates and revolves, and it also seems to change every night up in the sky when you look at the moon. Those changes or phases have been used as a calendar for thousands of years. And so today's lesson is how we can make a model to better understand the phases of the moon. To make this moon phase model, the materials include two pieces of black construction paper, tape, scissors, a piece of white chalk, small flashlight, and a small styrofoam ball that you can get at a local hobby store. Start by taking one of your pieces of paper and folding it lengthwise. And so we folded that into two long halves. And now it's time to cut it into two pieces. Okay, so now you have two congruent pieces that we're going to use as our model side for our moon phase model. All right, the first thing is to either use a ruler, or I like to use my hand, to divide this into four sections. So I'm going to put my hand here and my, right about here. One, two, three, and that makes four sections. I just like to lay that over and use that as a guide. And one, two, three, that makes four sections. So you've divided your paper into four sections, and these are going to represent some of the different phases of the moon. The next step is to try to find the center of this paper, which is right about here, and right about here, and I'm going to use the edge of this sheet as a guide to make a nice straight line across there. You could use a ruler, but this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I'm going to make a light line across here. So I divided this paper this way and in the four sections like that. Do the same thing here, and I'll probably use this as a guide just to mark it here. And I'll come down on this side and mark it here, because I want this to go all the way around it. And I'll use this paper again to make a nice line. And this, this is a guideline, so I'm just making it kind of light. It'll help me with my model placement. Okay, so I end up with two pieces that look like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's start with the first one. I'm going to cut small flaps into each section. So I'm going to mark where that I want one here. These are going to be little windows into the middle of our model. Two, three, four. So I have my four sections here. I'm going to do the same thing the other side of the model. And it's nice to get these to be equal distance apart. That's why you have the guide. But if you don't get them perfect, that still is going to be okay. It'll still work. So now I have my eight sections. The hard part now is cutting these little flaps out. But I found if I curl this up like this and cut it on the curve, it makes it kind of easy just to go here and here. And then I can fold it up and make my flap. There's one. I'm going to repeat that for all eight of them. Cutting here, up, up, fold it up, curl it, cut it, cut, cut, fold it up, the last one, curl, cut, 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 and fold it up. And so I've now made a piece that has four flaps. I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Seven of these flaps will be for a moon phase, and one of them will be for your flashlight to be the sun for your model. Because as you know, the moon is not a source of light. It only reflects light from the sun. 
So we're going to use a flashlight as the light source representing the sun and the illuminated parts of the styrofoam ball as the model. Okay, so I have two parts like this with eight different openings. It's time now to tape these, overlap them, line them up, tape them together. This works well if you have a partner, so if the two of you are working together, you can help each other. Okay, now we have our large strip for our phase model. It's time to fill in some of the different phases that you can see. And I always like to start with a full. So I'm going to uh, write full up above this. You, of course, you can adjust this any way you want. And I'm probably going to use uh, this as a uh, template for my moon. And since this is the illuminated part of the moon, let me color this in. Make, make some nice craters. Blend it. And there we have a nice example of a full moon. As we go down this way, the moon illumination starts to get small. So I'm, I'm going to add one more. Oh, this one's going to be a gibbous moon. And so it's not quite as full. And one of me, I might take that out and lay that there on that side and kind of take this part of it out. And G I B B O U S, gibbous. And this. Uh, As you see, it's starting to get less illuminated as it goes down this side. We call this waning. So this, as we go, the illumination is waning. I like to make it like small, nine, nine there we go, waning. Finally, we're going to get to the last quarter. The last quarter of the moon phase. And that's going to look as half a circle. So I come around here and here and straight down. Even though that looks like a half of a circle, if you think of it as the whole sphere, it's actually a quarter of the, quarter of the sphere that has been illuminated. So uh, we go to our last one, which is a crescent. And this one's the easy one for me because crescent starts with a C. And this one, the waning crescent, looks like a large C. And so as we go from full, we start to wane, which means it's smaller, to gibbous, to last quarter, to crescent. If you can imagine going all the way around, we'll start back on this one right here, which would be a new moon. New. Another name for it is nude because you can see through it. And so I could put nothing as a representation, but instead I'm just going to make a small light circle. And this is to represent no moon or a new a new moon new as we go this way something that's uh, kind of fun to remember that it's going to be the light gets bright on the right so this first one is a crescent and this crescent's going to be opposite so if the light's going to get bright on the right i'm going to make the crescent on the right so the crescent starts to get light on the right when we go this way, these are building up, and that's called waxing. W-A-X-I-N-G. So waxing is it's getting larger. It's like waxing your car. You're putting more and more on it. The light gets bright on the right. Uh, let's go to let's go to a first quarter. First quarter. On the other side, we were doing last quarter, and the first quarter, once again, will be half of it. As you can see, we're getting light is bright on the right. Whew. 
And finally, uh, we can get all the way to, I would put a gibbous, but I'm going to say because it is getting very big. And it looks almost full, but not quite. Okay, so we have, we started here, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, now it's getting smaller, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and new moon. And we're right above the full moon, I'm going to make a small hole right about there above the full moon. And I'm going to draw these on it because this is where the flashlight goes. This is the sun. You know, the sun is a star. Its name is Sol. So this is where our star is going to go. So I'm going to cut that out with my scissors. And I made it small, about the size of my um, little finger. And it's right above the full moon. Now, you might want to bend this and make a small cut. This is just small enough to shine the flashlight in. That's where my flashlight will end up being shined so I can uh, see the different phases. Now we have to save this one. I'm going to save this one for our model for something kind of special. And what that is, is I'm going to cut this little flap off because we need a light source to shine in. So this is going to be our sun. And, you know, the name for our sun is Sol, solar system. So this is our sun, and that's where we're going to shine our lights in. So if we go from the very beginning, let's go all the way back to a new moon. For example, the start of the Chinese New Year. This is the year of the dragon. They started on a new moon about every week. We get a different change to crescent. We're waxing to first quarter, to full, halfway through the cycle. Then we start to wane gibbous, last quarter, finally crescent, and then a few days later, new moon, and we start all over. So we have this. Now it's time to turn this into a circle, or actually an ellipse. And so. To do that, you can get somebody to help you, or you just pull a piece together with a small piece of tape. And it's kind of important to line up the uh, bottom, and uh, if you did it right, just about right here. And I like to tape uh, both on the inside and the outside. And so I'm going to do the same one way here. And now we have made most of the outside of our moon phase model. Okay, so it's time to set this aside and we'll do the second part. Give us. Especially gonna cut this flap off. Alright, so cut that flap off. So I'm cutting off the hole, so that's why I have soil there. Okay, so we have the last one is the first one. Sun. And the the sun. Sun. No, we're not we're gonna use this side because your other one's a little messy. Overlap on the whole day. Okay, take our second piece of paper, and this is going to be the top of our moon phase. And so what I like to do is we're going to take um, the part you just finished, and we're going to turn it upside down on this piece of paper. Now I like to find the sun and orient the sun on one of the sides over here. It doesn't matter which. Okay? Now what's important is that we're going to outline this and when we outline it we want to keep um, about an inch or so overlap so that your 
roof, <laughs> the top of your model doesn't fall in. So I'm keeping about a, an inch or so overlap, rotate it on round, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. All right, I can now remove this, set it aside, and I've made kind of an ellipse. Now what I like about this is that most things, including the moon, does not make a perfect circle. It's elliptical orbit. That means part of it is longer. Sometimes it's closer, sometimes a little bit further away. And I'm going to make my center here and just go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so I've got the top of mine with a center for putting my model of my moon. I'm just going to go ahead while I still have this, uh, turn this over and write moon phase. Moon phases. And uh, you can put your name on this or craters or anything you want. Turn it back over. And we have to now attach our small one inch diameter styrofoam ball. Now it's kind of, um, sometimes it's difficult to uh, get the tape on this, but uh, if you look at that ball, there's actually a, a top of it, which can be the uh, polar spot of the moon. That's what I like to work with. So I'm going to take the tape, pick up uh, the string with it, and then what I want to do is put this so it's right about at the pole of the moon, right about there. Okay, since it's a sphere, it doesn't really matter, but I just kind of like to have the, the top of it at the pole. Now I can, right now I can show rotation as the moon rotates, which it does, and I can show revolution. So it's a really easy way to show both of those. Might be a little bit harder for you to show rotation and revolution at the same time, but you can try it. Okay, so I have this, and now uh, I want to bring back my phase section, and we got to kind of judge of how far down we want to hang this. And so I like to find the sun, and I'm going to measure it right about there, so I know to mark right about, if I, if I tape it here, that should be right about in the window. So I just kind of laid it there and looked at the top, and that gives me a good reference point. So I'm going to hold that, and remove the phases, and know that that right about there is where I need to tape it. Put my piece of tape here. Okay. And if you want, you can uh, cut off the extra. That's kind of up to you. Um, it might be a good idea to cut off. I want to secure that. And, and now I have a top that I can use on my moon phase. Uh, we still need to, uh, be, uh, I want to test it first by just setting it here and see, uh, there's the sun. Turn this over and kind of just make sure it does fit. Looks good. So now it's time to attach these two together. Turn that upside down. Turn your phases upside down. And I like to keep the sun over um, at the long part. And now we need four pieces of tape, uh, one on each side. So we can start here with uh, whack, uh, the waning part, piece of tape here, and then tape it down. Rotate it around. Opposite side. Tape it down. We have two more uh, to go. And the final piece right here. Everything's lined up pretty good.
And the final piece right here. And we have now finished our moon phase model. All that's left now is to see if it works. Okay, so you notice there's a hole for the sun. So when I shine the flashlight in there, I should be able to look into the different little phase windows and see it. Oh yeah, that is so cool. So leave the light there. Come on around. This is where it's good to have a partner help you on this. One to shine the light. That's almost a new moon. That is a new moon. And on around. Checking out the different, different phases of the moon. So, the phases of the moon model is easy to make. All it takes is a couple pieces of paper, a styrofoam ball, and a flashlight, and you too can illuminate the phases of the moon. Oh, dude, it works! Is it working? Yeah. It's green, but it's Can I turn it? It's lazy and fat.